problem area or not when the real pressure is on the serve. why Andy Murray elected to receive. That's a little better. It's been nine months since Andy Murray played a left-hander. They do present different problems. There's another Spaniard, Luciano Lopez, at the US Open last year. Murray obviously won in five sets. Caught a little bit by surprise by that second serve, 112 miles an hour. Expect the unexpected playing Vadasco. Yeah, that's well done, Vadasco, because he would have been nervous coming out here on centre court, playing Murray. And after the double fault, he answered all the questions there. Does Vadasco have enough in his? armoring to trouble Andy Murray today, Boris? I said in the pre-match that Vadasco is one of the finest shot makers in the game today if he's on. And obviously reaching the quarterfinal must be a tremendous confidence boost. And today it's nothing to lose. He can show the kind of tennis that brought him to the top ten and his highest ranking was number seven. So on a good day, he's very dangerous. Busy out there and busy on centre. For me, there's no doubt that Vadasco has the shots, the weapons to, to really cause Murray a lot of trouble. My one question mark would be the belief. This stage of a grand slam on a big court against the home player. And as a right-handed player playing a lefty, the serve out wide is usually the first choice. Seen that a couple of times with Murray in the tournament, playing the short slice, not the drop shot, almost inviting his opponent to move forward. But Dasco didn't oblige.
Very confident first service game by Murray. He must feel the nerves as well. Until he gets to the final, he's playing people that uh, he's supposed to beat. It's uh, a pressure that I suppose you learn to live with. But who would know more than I? Well, were you supposed to lose always? <laughs> That's a big miss. Block 15. He hit a forehand against Julien Beneteau, another Frenchman as we look at the umpire, Pascal Maria. He hit a forehand of 110 miles an hour in that second round match. Has to be the fastest ground stroke I've ever seen. It is a beautiful shot, but it's a, it's a bit of a tempest. Was it inside the line? Yes, it was in. <laughs> Two misses in a row on his favoured side. And Murray with a chance. Turn from Murray. The Dasco just spun the first serve in at 89 miles an hour and obviously caught Murray unawares. Doesn't often miss those returns. Doesn't miss three shots like this in a in a set or a match. Murray really keen to try and take advantage. First break point opportunity. Well, 132 miles an hour for a surf just gives you the answer. The type of tennis he can play. And with his motion, it's it's effortless power. Very good use of his legs driving up at the ball. Good change of pace by Vedasco on the serve. Spaniard saved a break point there at 30-40, and he had uh, Love 30 against him, and he's serving his way out of trouble. But 
To hold serve after making four forehand errors in a game. Murray will be disappointed with, uh, with himself there. Vadasco is full of experience, of course. So many years. Top 25, but now at number 54 in the world, that's going to rise. His best slam result was at the Australian Open. Oh, now they should be, or they were, together in uh, Carrington for the Man United. First day of uh, training, so Alex Ferguson and uh, Nemanja Vidic there. And it's more fun here. Is that some Irvin King as well? But Sir Alex has a bit of time on his hand. He obviously retired from his job Time. as a manager of Man United. Good to see him out at the tennis. He obviously supports his fellow Scott. I saw him last year at US Open as well. Well, I'm, I'm sure he, he'll be happy to be uh, away now and just relaxing. And David Moyes has got the Wayne Rooney thing to deal with at the moment. I don't know where he'll be playing. <laughs> he was asked this morning if he had any words for the uh, Spanish press. He said, uh, Thank yes, you. just one. Thank you. Adios. Thank you. <laughs> He's one of a kind. Absolutely the best manager. And that's from an Arsenal fan. This is the man he's supporting. That's going to be the theme of the match for Dasko. Going for his shots, taking chances, obviously. Involving Ladan first errors. Touch the line, but not the service line. Seem high enough at the moment. Play underway here at 11 o'clock this morning across the various events. The boys, girls, junior singles, the uh, seniors as well. Ah, oh, rocket. Rod Laver here. Twice a winner. The Grand Slam. We've held all four of the majors at the same time. Twice. No one's ever done that before. It means all in one year.
Andy Murray not interested in defending against the Vadasco forehand. He is aiming squarely at the backhand. And that is a pattern that we're going to see in this match, surely. He'll choose his time when to go into the dangerous Vadasco forehand side. Left for three. Predicament for Murray is if he keeps going to the backhand, then Vadasco moves a little bit further and further over. Your target gets smaller and smaller. And that also means that Murray's the one that does all the running. So many misses from the forehand side. So there's going to be an awful lot more winners, you'd imagine. As well as a lot there's, more losers. There's been some bad mistakes from Vadasco, but uh, haven't really been, they haven't cost him yet. And he's got to certainly keep going for his forehand if he's going to have any impression. 87% of Murray's shots go into the left backhand side. For me, Murray's got to play strong to the forehand on occasions, really to open up that backhand side. He just keeps going to the backhand. Could I be hope, a bit predictable. I hope that man told him that too. I would agree with you, Tim. If you play too passive, it's going to cost you at the end. You have to do all the running. And we keep serving faster and faster. Seems like it's really warming up now. Quickest of the tournament. That's adrenaline. Leads. 18 three minutes played, not first. much to choose between them. Vadasco, 3 2 up. Thank you. We'll keep an eye uh, on that one. What an opportunity for Polish tennis. Unbelievable that Kubot and Janowicz would be uh, emerging, one of them, to a, to a semi-final at Wimbledon. Amazing. Ian Ritchie there on the right-hand side, just behind Roy Hodgson, yeah. the England manager. Ian, chief executive here for uh, many years. Now with the RFU and Stuart Lancaster in charge of the England team is here as well. Michael McIntyre, who played well, did himself proud, actually, in the rally against cancer we enjoyed uh, at Queen's Club. And there's uh, Ian Tyriak, who's always got a view or two. He's got the world's biggest tie and a very snazzy blazer for the Royal Box. <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible. Well, yes, he was your manager, wasn't he? He's a good friend and long-time manager. Interesting character.
Really only used to see these shots at the French Open on the clay, but now with the courts a little bit slower, the angle's coming into play. Top spinning ball. It is an unforced error, but the pressure is there when Vadasco winds up on this forehand side to whip his racket head through. It's a really terrifying shot. Dasco hit a moment ago was at 3,900 RPM. How many miles is that? <laughs> In the sort of car you drive, lots. Not giving Vodatsko much of a target, hitting his backhand slice approach almost as a drop shot. Another one at change of pace. Wanting Vedasco to come to the net, because that's something he doesn't really like to do. But missed the backhand.
30-15. In some of the rallies of Amur, a bit too defensive, a bit too hesitant, too far behind the baseline. Letting the dust go dictate the rallies. Oh boy. That's going to be the key, the balance between the right aggression and too many unforced errors. Bit of a chance in the second serve. Fine line for Murray as well. He's got to look to be aggressive on the on the second serve opportunities, but Vadasco surprised him with the serve to the forehand. Fernando Vadasco, a 41st consecutive major championships. There are four majors each year, of course, the Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. And in winning the US Open last year, Andy Murray became the first British male to win a slam since pre-war. 1936, when Fred Perry beat Don Budge 10-8 in the fifth set at Forest Hills. He beat Djokovic in five sets, and it was absolutely magnificent. Rocket. Is that Rocket under there? Raud Labour. As an amateur and as a professional, he did the Grand Slam. Have a look at this here, Boris, if you can make some sense of this. Fernando Vadasco, when he gets close to the lines. <laughs> Time. He's hitting close to the lines on nine occasions out of 49. Murray obviously playing a little bit further away from the lines. Has only found that 60 percent, 60 centimeter yeah. area four times out of 52. And that's going to be uh, well, the key. Vedasco has to be a bit more aggressive than Murray. He has to take his chances, and Murray's hoping for the unforced arrow. tennis balls here it's supposed to help the server but that isn't always the case if a returner it gets a hold of the return it's going to help them it's the person who gets the first big hit in Second serve. Nervy moments now for Andy Murray. No, it's really Vadasco that we're talking about doing all the attacking. Murray really needs to get on the front foot quickly. Letting Vadasco 
dictate too much once the rally starts. Murray would have been relieved to see that return of serve catch the top of the net a couple of inches higher and he was in trouble. Another great first serve, but as so often the case is with Murray, waits till he's behind until he gets the aggression. Titchy little second serve at 76 miles an hour. I mean, of course he's nervous. Really difficult to force yourself to get the racket head through. Still quite early stages in this match, it feels like. Half an hour played. It's a good game for Murray to get out of, to get back level on serve at four all. Now you really want him to put the pressure on Vadasco, look to be aggressive these first couple of points. strength most of the time it can be a liability and at the moment it's not completely under control 10 forehand unforced errors not winning numbers for the Spaniard and it's only fall in the first set But on the other hand, if the Spaniard played safe, he's just going to push the ball back. He's got no chance. So I'm sure he spoke with his coach beforehand. You know, take your chances, be aggressive.
any of our strength. But he recovered so well so many times for Dasko. That was a taxing rally. 15 15. Murray so quick up to the, the net cord, back for the lob. Finally able to put the backhand down the line for a winner. 15.30, half chance for Murray. Chasing that Badasco forehand. We don't want another incident the like of which we saw one Martin Del Potro earlier on. It just seemed to catch his ankle. It's all right. Yeah, he was going to go for a slider, but then got stuck. That obviously was a big fall by Badasco here down the line. Well played. Just have to tip your hat to play like that. Yes. There's nothing you can do. And he was tested with the net courts uh, twice the first serve. On break point, that's not easy. Found Murray not moving as fluid and as natural as done in his previous matches. It's early stages. Maybe he does feel a bit of tension of the match today. His legs are not moving as fast. surprise coming into these quarterfinals was that uh, well the two Spaniards there and neither of them were Rafa Nadal Roger Federer and Nadal former Wimbledon champions icons really of the game probably played the best match ever seen on center court back in 2008 both out by the first Wednesday of the championships but seeds number one and two still there Novak Djokovic through to the semi-final and Andy Murray playing in in this one here Tim Hedman, when did you first know that Andy was going to be really good? I think the first time that he came away with us on Davis Cup, we uh, we practiced in um, in La Manga in Spain, and, and uh, the first time I'd really seen him play up close, and, and uh, you How could tell was that he was probably 16, 17 at that time, and. and uh, as I think with all great sportsmen and women, he, he looked like he had a lot of time on the ball. It was very difficult to rush him, and, and uh, he had a solid game. And, and uh, you know, since then, he's just moved through the rankings and right towards the very top of the game at, uh, at number two. And right now, though, getting back to the present, he knows that he's in a, he's in a dogfight here. That was a big game for Vadasco to hold. Well, you're not going to find anybody in here that's going to call it anything other than Hedman Hill. 
That's what it was named first, and that's what it will remain. Various people talking about something to do with Laura Robson or with, uh, with Andy himself, but the point is everyone's having a good time. Four, five. Quite a long way back, Murray, trying the drop shot. In trying Vadasco to get him out of his comfort zone. This time of no prevail. Second set, second serve a bit short. 15-13. Pedasco just stepping in, having a crack at it. It's definitely an opportunity to, to attack Murray's game on the second serve. That was 94 miles an hour. It's a bit quicker than it has been. Dasco didn't really even play that forehand. He thought it was going to go out over the baseline, was hoping, wanting, expecting the call. Line like Nureyev there and just unleashing this forehand. Wonderful. Well, he's made a lot of errors on that side, but he's sticking with it. Just the 99 miles an hour. Took a bit off it. <laughs> Amazing. Almost three quarters of an hour played. Murray on the brink of losing his first set at the championships. second and he's marching off to his yeah, chair. Cool. Murray's Second unhappy. Four. The Spaniards are not a set to them. Well, that was a bit of a turn up. What happened there, Boris? The pressure got to him. I felt in the whole first set, uh, Murray wasn't aggressive enough. He let Radaska dictate the points. It was too far behind the baseline. And eventually we talked about the four, uh, forehand errors by Radaska, but he's taking the chance. Eventually he's going to hit it in a 30 all. He hit that perfect inside out and gave him a, a set point. And the second set of Murray was a bit dodgy throughout the first set. And that's eventually going to cost you. Is it time to panic? No, uh, that's too early. But we said before, and it's going to be you know proper match. This isn't a walkover. Vitasco's played well. He's a great shot maker when he's on, and he's playing good. But his forehand was off for so much of the time in that set, and yet he's won it, Tim. He certainly has, but I think as um, as all great players who have great shots, they trust it. You know, those those shots that were in the past, they shouldn't affect the next shot. And uh, certainly he made some unforced errors to begin with, but when it really mattered, you see at the bottom there, 15 unforced errors in the set compared to three for Murray. You have to take into account when he made those unforced errors. He always made them kind of when he was ahead, of, ahead in the count and then when he got his opportunity in the in the last game. He hit the big four and he found the winner.
another key stat there. Second serve, points Time. won. Vadasco is winning more points, and that's a general illustration, or normally is, of who's winning the uh, baseline exchanges. At the moment, Vadasco finding the way. Murray really needs to knuckle down at the early part of this second set when you, we were able to watch him at the change of ends. There was a lot of dialogue. Really, it was a one-way dialogue from Murray up to the box, and that's not a good sign. Needs to put that behind him, focus in the early part of this second set and see if he can change the momentum. What do you think Andy should do, Boris, when you, you've got the lefty serving well into Andy's two-handed backhand? A lot of the time he's having to go to the slice just to get the ball back in play, but then that gives Vadasco the time to run around and start hammering forehands. Like that. Throw in the bit of nervous tension from the crowd and uh, stop to get a little bit uncomfortable out there. A little bit, and I don't like the way Murray is playing. And that is one thing, losing the first set, playing the right way and being a bit unfortunate, but he's, in my opinion, way too passive. And he's not moving the way he's done before on the return. He says it's probably one of the best backhand returns in the game, but not today. And his camp is worried, his girlfriend is a bit tense as well. Uh, is he getting predictable on the serve? The thing is, though, he only had one break point against, and it was a double fault, and it happened to be a set point. He need, feel a bit, he needs to get more emotional, he needs to get a crowd involved, he needs you know, this is quarter final Wimbledon. Get excited. And in the first set, Murray was always playing catch-up. Vadasco serving first. You lose your serve. You lose your serve at the end of a set, playing catch-up again. Again on the backhand side, and it's not because of the racket head, but it's because of his position. His leg position is different today. Doesn't move his leg in front. Yeah, 
Just explain your point, Boris, about the backhand. What is he not doing that you would like to see? He doesn't step in. He waits for the ball to come towards him. And then with a the lefty serve, he always gets caught within the body. He doesn't hit it positively forward. And he knows a thing or two about backhand. Actually, his forehand was always better. That's what I was talking about. This time he went down. He put the step forward. 13. Last time Murray had Love 30 on the Badasco serve. Spaniard took some pace off and got his first serve in and was rewarded. Not so this time. Goes with heat. 131 miles an hour. And what a clean one. That's the frustrating part when Murray's done a good job in the first two points, gets to love 30, looking to get involved in a point and Ace unreturnable serve, still in there at 30 all. I like the return. Great second serve by Vadasco into the body, but he was able to move around. 30-14. Break for Murray. Of yes was from Andy Murray as he breaks her and takes control of the second set. Murray leads two games to one, second set, first set the last one. But it's a long way from two to six. But finally, something good has happened for him. It's been a while coming, almost an hour. Certainly has. He made a good start to the game. The Dasco responded, but on that break point for me. The most positive sign was Murray was looking to play aggressive, but aggressive to the forehand. If he goes to the forehand, then he has a chance of opening up the backhand, and you see as by, by his reaction how much that breaker serve meant to him. Tim, you and I were at the Olympic Games. The noise in here was unbelievable. He beat Djokovic in the semi-final, 5-5, five and five, and then Federer in straight sets in the final. I mean, the roof almost came off this place. It's a different crowd now, but... The uh, sense of uh, embracing Andy Murray as the man and the player is, is certainly here. They're ready. They certainly are, and, and the, the crowd will sense that nervousness losing the first set down 6-4. Are we going to see another upset at this Wimbledon 2013? Certainly with a, a break of serve, settle people down and get this ball rolling in the right direction. 
sweeties, uh, a bucket of sweeties doing the rounds in the Royal Box and Sir Alex. He looks a lot happier here than he did on the touchline half the time. Always chewing, <laughs> always concentrating on the sport. This time it was inside the court. He was moving his legs. He was looking for that winner. That's what I call positive play. And that's a role reversal. It's Murray there hitting the good first serve, getting the defensive reply from Vadasco. In the first set, it was the other way round. That was between a drop shot, a four and slice, and at the end he hit it in, you know, it's at four to laugh. We forgive him. You don't see four and slices anymore. If you're attacking, your Murray opponent leads. cannot be. Murray taking the space in the forecourt and consolidating that break of serve. 3 1 second set. Talked about his forehand and his unforced errors. Four times as many as Mary. Again, stepping in. First one to take the initiative. It's like the dialogue he had with his corner worked. Would you call it dialogue or just shouting? <laughs> Making noises. This forehand, isn't it? He's raking forehand down the line. He makes space and then just the rotation through this. Top spin rate, speed 106 miles an hour. Still short of the one we saw against Benito. Come on, boy. Power <laughs> it up. That's why a lefty serve is always dangerous on grass. It puts you out of the court to recover quickly. Sometimes it just can't.
someone almost had to go to the hospital. That's a break hole. Murray leads. Tedesco, still a breakdown, second set. Time. Long. Fifteen all. Yvonne Lendl said at Queen's Club that he would never criticise Andy Murray if he was taking the initiative in a rally and he was trying to get the first strike in. If he was absorbing pace, then he might have something to say. Far behind the baseline again. But he's not getting his first serve in. Still. 15-13. Got to push it. Got to move forward. It's not a good step to have. It's a good key area, isn't it, between these two? see things from Andy Murray's point of view. 15, 14. But Vadasco is covering the court so well and he's making Murray play one more ball. So many of these rallies. Two break points in a row. a poor game for Murray he missed two backhands one long one in the net he missed the forehand volley and then the forehand deep can't make four unforced errors and donate your serve like that this is a real test now 
both in the box and on the court for emotional control, not giving energy away. Murray dealing with a lot of disappointment here. But we've seen so often recently that he can turn that to his own advantage with new tennis balls for Dasco here. Vedasco playing with a bit more confidence now than the early stages of the second set. Three out of five is such a mental roller course. You go through so many ups and downs, you just gotta you know, be up when it matters, really. <laughs> They tend to play musical coaches quite a lot in that particular country. So many with so much knowledge. Now, this is the serve that we thought might get him trouble. And certainly for two years, it's been a liability. It's taken him outside of the top 50 had no real form to suggest this run coming into this tournament. And I'm not sure I've really seen anyone serve this consistently, this aggressively. 135 mile an hour ace up the middle, 134 mile an hour serve out wide to finish that game off. And it's got a different feel again, Murray yeah. down a set, 3-4. And the spin that Vadasco puts on the ball and the speed, it, the, the revolutions per minute, RPM, just as your car engine spins, so does the ball. Look at the uh, comparison, Nadal, Vadasco and Murray. Nadal hits at over 3,000 RPM 67% of the time. I mean, he's the top spin wizard. Vadasco, over 3,000 RPM 37% of the time. So a third of his shots are whipping in at 3,000 RPM. I, I can't really explain it apart from to say it is vicious to play against, and the effect is that it hits the surface and it rears up and it's difficult to control. Murray puts a flatter hit on it. It also means that when you're hitting the ball with that much spin and that much aggression, you still get margin for error, because that's what's making the ball dip. Whereas Murray, when he's really trying to you know, hit the ball hard, he has to go flatter and lower over the net and less margin for error. And having all well set, this has become a little tense. Maro needs to hold serve here. doesn't matter where Vadasco is on the court. If he can get a good hit and a good swing at a forehand, he can hit winners. Mistakes, love 30.
That was the first nervous shot I've seen Medaska hit today. This is bad news for Murray. Penetrating, positive backhand return off a second serve by Vadasco, but that was uh, a piece of bad fortune for Andy Murray, who's now lost two serves in a row, and it brings Vadasco to the line, serving for a two-set lead. Thank you. This Quite is nice. a bit of a turn-up. Thank you. shots from Vadasco. This second serve over the years has been vulnerable and right now serving for a two sets to love lead. He's going to be wanting to make some first serves. Could they be Thank quiet you. with such an amazing point? I don't know. Let them go loose a little bit. Uphill struggle for Pascal, that will. Where's this second serve going to go? Eight shot Ray, we're still recovering from it. That gave him love 30. The error makes it love 40. Three break points. Quite sure whether it's going to go safe back to the backhand or risk it cross court. 
but he needs to make the right decision now to get back into that match. But does go, his ball tosses all over the place. No. Challenge. No challenge. Three, 24 feet behind the baseline and he yes. was beaten back by this forehand he's got to get on the front foot three break points gone in this game in a row but Asco, two points from the set Phenomenal second serve there from Vadasco, 113 miles an hour. Murray did very well to get into the rally. He got the short ball that he wanted and really made a bad decision to play the drop shot. All of a sudden from three break points. It's now set point for a two sets to love lead. for the language of course but you can understand the frustration that Andy Murray feels at this point he really is uh, torturing himself at this uh, change of ends he seems a little bit unclear as to what he's supposed to be doing and a lot of the credit for that must go to Badasco who has resisted and once again we saw the strength of his resistance love 40 down in that last game and came through it to win five straight points and take the set well done him and if you think about the game plan for both players, it's who's going to serve aggressively, get the opportunity for the one-two punch, dictate with the second shot of the rally, and, and generally boss the match. And that's been absolutely Vadasco. And, and if Murray's going to turn this around, he needs to be more aggressive. He's got to try and get into these rallies, hit strong to the forehand to open up Vadasco's backhand got to serve more aggressively on the second serve and, and let's face it that's not going to be easy but Dasko is a good front runner Boris two sets down how do you think accept the challenge just you know put it all on the line and you know, he had the chance to come back in the second set Time. but he just doesn't take his chances he plays too passive almost afraid when there's a chance to get ahead and, and that's something you can't afford and now he's two sets a lot down he shouldn't worry about strategy and tactics anymore. So, all about the heart and willpower from here. He's come back from two sets down plenty of times before. that service game badly he needs to
Just got to find a way now. It doesn't have to be pretty. Just find a win. Find a point. Find your courage. Vadasco just doing enough there to make Murray cut the margin a little bit too fine. Just dumped his racket head beneath the ball and it sort of fell off, a bit of a deceleration. And these are dangerous times indeed for Andy Murray, who's two sets down, not even an hour and a half played here. It's a quarter-final at the championships. And don't we know it? This hole will be so important to re-establish your position. That's exactly what he needs. Well, that's the first step in what could be a long journey back from two sets down. And we may be here sometime. Certainly out there, they will be hoping that we're going to be here for a while. 5.15 now. No one's going home. Just to give them a little bit of hope, Murray did come back six times from a two-set lead. He's done it before, can he do it again? He did it against Robin Harser at the US Open in 2011, and he's done it on this court against Richard Gasquet. 
did Richard Gasquet twice, both at the French Open uh, and here. Where there's a will, there's a way. hour and 29 minutes I would say those were Murray's two most aggressive backhands and his back's against the wall right now if he's gonna go down he's got to go down fighting go down swinging After having a break of serve in the second set at 3-1, we thought he was marching to one set also. Just a, another step in the right direction for Murray, but a break of serve and two love. Just got to ride that wave now. He's unforced errors are creeping into the Vadasco game. He's a break up. Momentum is on his side.
When Murray lets Vadaska dictate, he's on the losing end. What can he do to stop it? Attack. Mm -hmm. Or hit an ace. Well, there's no doubt it takes strength of character to come from uh, two sets down. And it takes uh, support as well, that certainly helps. But how much is a player aware of the crowd that he's playing in front of and their emotions as he's going through it? I've got two good ones in the commentary box with me. Uh, Tim Hemman, when, when, when you got involved in one of these sort of rock and roll flag waving things, did you. Um, did you feed off the crowd? Did you? Absolutely. Yeah, it's Im impossible not to be aware of them. And, and uh, certainly at this moment in time, Andy's going to need all the help he can get. And, and uh, when you are down two sets of love, it's obviously not a, not a good position. But uh, you really have to take small steps. It is one step at a time. You've got to put the, t the first two sets out of your mind and say, OK, we start afresh in the third set. He's got off to a great start. Now it's very important that he maintains that momentum, gets this third set under his belt, and then, step by step, you can start putting pressure on your opponent. I absolutely loved it too. when the crowd got involved. They lifted me to new heights. And they sense after losing the second set, he started applauding a bit more, giving a bit more, you know, showing their support for their man. I think it suddenly dawned on everybody that Murray could lose this match. I mean, coming in with a head-to-head -head of having won eight and lost just one, everybody thought Vadasco maybe could win this, but uh, Murray wasn't taking him lightly. Three love, Murray. Third set. Oh. Smart play by Vadasco, taking a bit of the pace and go for positioning on that serve. Putting Murray completely out of the court with the open forehand down the line. Thirty. 
use. Be interesting to see Vadasco's mentality because when he came on the court at the beginning of the match, he really didn't have anything to lose. Suddenly, an hour and a half in, two sets to love up, he's got a lot to lose. Smith with Judy Murray, Davis Cup captain. Coach to Andy when he was very young, 11, 12 years of age. Travelled with him, playing the Futures events in Spain. That's a hard learning ground. In yes. fact, that's where Vadasco beat Murray the very first time they played in 2003 at the Segovia Challenger. Ten years ago. You can call that a clean ace. The best feel in the world. You loved it. Vadasco is a member of three Spanish Davis Cup winning teams. He was a semi-finalist at the Australian Open back in 2009. It's not as though he's not been in these sorts of situations before. He played one of the best matches of all time against Rafael Nadal at the Australian Open in his only semi-final at this level. Losing in five sets. Murray needs to play solid on his service games now. He's up a break. Doesn't need any fancy footwork now, just solid grass court tennis. thinking to himself where was that over the first hour and 20 minutes or so in the first two sets he seemed timid at times not now out mm hmm He's not short on ability, is he, Vadaska? No, he's went on fire. One of the most exciting players to watch. A real shot maker. But there must be a reason he hasn't won a major or big tournament that it's not because of his tennis but his mentality he's fragile at times
Andy Murray, certainly, by winning the US Open last year. Oh, what a boost that must have been to, to him. Having lost the US Open final in 2008, the Australian Open final 2010, the Australian Open final 2011. Stop it! And then the <laughs> Wimbledon final. I know he won the Olympics, but finally win a slam. What a relief. You were lucky. You won your first one. You didn't even know what you were doing. You were 17. Mean, what do you mean lucky? I know. It? it was hard work. <laughs> Overcoming Kevin Curran. Who did you beat in the semi final that year? Anders Jared. Oh, it was yeah. a rain delayed Saturday semi final. He had me a set in a break. Thank God it rained and thank God we didn't have the roof. <laughs> so he could think about it. He got nervous on Saturday and I was able to win. Time. Tim, four semi finals here. Happy memories. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> I would have quite liked a roof. Sure. And somewhat quick, quicker grass than we see these days. So few servant volleyers in the draw. Podasco coming into this match had servant volleyed once in his four victories. Such is the power and potency of his set ground strokes. Two sets to the Spaniard. Break of serve, 4-1 to Murray, third set. Settle in. We could be here a while. So who's winning the battle of the second serve points? An area that we pointed out. Murray, more so. down the middle that one just caught the top of the net break point Murray
but it's almost as though the clarity of the task has enabled really him to play is. better tennis. At two sets down, there are no secrets. You know exactly what you have to do. You understand. And look at that. Tim, after all this time, 78 points each. There are big points and there are less important points. And the tide is turning for good. Let's see. Little serve and volley this time, but the volley wasn't needed. The boy is back. Did have three double faults. The first one to lose the first set. But this set is his. Everybody up. Sorax has seen a few comebacks in his time. And is that what we're watching here? The sun. <laughs> comes out to greet the Murray set. 6-1, just over 30 minutes. They'll be pleased about it. They can stretch their legs a little bit. But don't lose your space on Edmund Hill because I think there's a lot more to come here. I just wonder now as Fernando Vadasco uh, goes off the court for a little break, just wonder what he's got left. Now, this is a very sensible time to take a break in some ways I don't know whether he needs to or not whether it's one of these loo breaks where you have to be accompanied I just feel that it's a good idea for him to get out of here for the for the moment too. we we talk about the tide turning and, and Vadasco is now really trying to stop that happening and I feel that the early part of this fourth set is going to be crucial and I think it's a good idea for Murray to yeah. get off the court as well instead of just sitting there waiting for your opponent to come back Go and change your shirt, really make sure you're, you're clear. And Have you got your stuff with you, Boris? Shorts? Have you got any shorts with you? There's uh, two vacant positions on centre court right now. There's no players. Well, I wouldn't want to wear my shorts anymore. <laughs> I don't think I fit into them. What's wrong with your legs? Nothing. The legs are right. It's the waist. It's a bit bigger now. <laughs> you're quite trim at the moment, Hens, playing a little bit. Not too bad. But okay. that's a great, uh, you know, the, the shock of Murray losing the second set down two sets to love. There was a lot of nervous energy.
Sue, thank you very much indeed. And uh, one wonders what effect it had on Murray's mentality as he retake, retakes centre court, knowing that the winner of this is going to play the winner of Kubot versus Janovic. Honestly, what an opportunity. And just to let you know, we were talking about spin rates earlier on. You can really see that if you have a 3D TV. I don't know whether you do or not. Uh, but you need to set Time. it on the side-by-side -side mode. And from tomorrow on, on the BBC red button, the HD red button, HD channel, you can watch the women's semi-finals and the rest of the matches here at Wimbledon on 3D. So, free view and you view viewers, channel 303, Virgin Media, channel 944, Freesat, channel 980. And I do offer a free tuning service to go with all that information. But tennis in 3D, it is interesting. You almost sound like you know what you're talking about. It was uh, a slightly dodgy read. Apologies for that. <laughs> OK, in bright sunshine. Set number four. Fernando Badasco have another surge of energy here. For me, it's not necessarily about the energy, it's about his mentality, whether he really has the belief, the courage to step up and commit to his shots. And Murray's staying positive as well. An issue with the ball toss earlier. Good movement by the Lions woman. A weak ending to the game from Marit Vadasco marches off to the chair, pleased with his work. He has held serve. Boris Becker and Tim Henman both been talking about Murray stepping up, stepping into the court, taking the ball on, not being dictated to. Have a look at this. This is the percentage of shots taken inside the baseline. Murray moving forward in the court. 41% in that third set. 18% in set one, 25% a quarter of the time playing inside the baseline in the second set. If players could see some of the statistics, it would certainly help them. But a lot of coaches would lose their jobs, though. <laughs> Overall, it's two out of play, three sets, pretty fast. So physically, both players should be fine. Even it does get into a fifth set.
Murray plays some good drop shots at times, but trying to play that drop shot from behind the baseline against a good athlete by, like Vadasco is not going to pay off. Again, it wasn't the racket, it was the legs not staying in the right position. Baseline, Murray's baseline that brought up a puff of smoke from Vadasco, a perfect length. Some of the crowd got excited. Break point Vadasco. the lap of Francesco Ricci Bitti, the president of the International Tennis Federation. He's in the front row of the Royal Box and he just fumbled it there. As soon as Vadasco got that return deep, Murray was on the defensive. Vadasco starting to dictate with the forehand again. And not a good sign for Murray. He needs a big first serve now. He knows all yes. about five sets at the Grand Slams, and this is the biggest of them all. Crucial. This time he opened up the rally on the Vadasco forehand side. Following up with the backhand down the line. It's so much easier. Bravo, 
<laughs> well, that was an easy game to win, wasn't it? Crowd are up here, they love this. Tested to the limit. Absolutely. I mean, I thought that was enough. Then there was this. And then look at Murray. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah. Thank you. His first few steps are so, Thank so you. quick. Both players keyed in. Anyway, after all is said and done, it's one all. Four set. Crucial part of the match for Murray. He needs to re-establish his dominance he had early in the third set. It's an advantage for Vadasco serving first as well. Murray always trying to play catch-up. Did a great job to hold that service game to get to one all and then suddenly Feel like you're down 2 1. Got to get back on level terms again. Another second serve by Vadasco catching Murray off guard. These players are using parts of this centre court. Been used since 1922. They're using parts of it that 10, 15 years ago people just didn't use. Covering every square foot of this uh, huge playing surface. I mean, if there was one thing that tells you everything you need to know about Andy Murray, I mean, we know he won Olympic gold and the Grand Slam and everything else, but it was in 2005 when he made his debut here, made the third round, he would have been easily satisfied and would have easily made top 50, top 60, top 70 in the world. But he knew that he had to make uh, physical changes to himself to compete at the highest level with Federer and Nadal and, and even Djokovic, who he knew very well. And to his great credit, Tim, he did so. Absolutely. I think one of the challenges for him was that he was playing at such a high level at such a young age and his body really wasn't physically mature and, and he couldn't necessarily do all the work that he wanted to do. But as he's, you know, developed and had time to spend in the gym and do the work on the track, he really has become one of the best athletes out there and he's going to need it today. And, and, and Boris, at 17 years of age, you came through, you won one of these things, you already had a physicality, but the game has changed. Well, the playing style was different then, the records were different, we were, you know, the rallies were maybe shorter than the way I played. But obviously talking about the, his, his, you know, cornerstone, his foundation of his game is footwork. And when he gets to some of these balls, he makes the point to play one more shot. And that's what he needs to do today. His footwork wasn't at his best in his first two sets. I felt he was a bit, you know, timid almost, a bit, you know, couldn't move his legs, almost nervous. And I always feel positive about him when he starts moving on the return, stays positive on the ground strokes. That's what he needs now. 15.
His first serve percentage is at 69. That's what he needs. Stage of the match, every point counts. Every moment is important, you can't afford anything loose anymore. Drops out. Easy hold to Murray. Two all. Fourth set. Two games all. Fourth set. That's what I mentioned earlier in the, the match. Dusko is able to hit a few more winners than Anfos errors. It's going to be dangerous for Murray. struggle Verdasco has within. How much do I risk? That's gutsy from Verdasco after two double faults. Been down 15 30, responded with a couple of great serves. It's amazing, isn't it? Just after six o'clock here and we're watching the Spanish number nine against the uh, British number one the depth in that country is absolutely extraordinary number nine in Spain of course he'll be climbing up the rankings a little bit after this but number 54 in the world he had a high of number seven for Dasco it's hard to know where that form has gone but it's certainly there today. A 
a sentiment echoed both uh, at home, no doubt, and certainly in here, and certainly on Hetman Hill as well. We could be in for a five-setter here, but Vadasco, each time, he's uh, found himself in some trouble. He's managed to dig himself out of it in this set. And each time, Andy Murray has a minute and a half to sit down and contemplate what's coming up, which is a service game that he must hold. breathing you can hear is from the ball boys who are just by our microphones under the net no doubt the players panting away as well because that was uh, a tough rally up 30 Oof. You wouldn't mind a couple more aces in this service game. Couple of unforced errors from your opponent. Vasco will be disappointed with that shot, just a rallying slice backhand. Just wonder whether he's got the metal to take it. Murray needs to dig deep now. shot but he committed it's another break point yeah. 
Yes. That was played with courage. He's not winning anything in tennis, playing safe, especially when it matters most. You gotta take it to the opponent. Look for the winner. For Murray. He wishes. After getting on to level terms three all, he's really got to try and make this game last. Get stuck into a Vadasco service game. And feed off the crowd a little bit if he wins a point or two. That's exactly what he does. The reason he takes a towel now, he wants to let the opponent know this is crucial, this is tense. Gives for Dasko more time to think about. these Vadasco forehands. That's why he trains the way he does. The shirt's not big enough. Get some more muscles in there. He's running everything down. And he's got his opportunity now. Again, taking a bit more time. from Vadasco. That second serve was hit at 112 miles an hour. This Bennett has nerves of steel.
15. Murray coming up to the net to Murray questioning the first serve, but as you can see from that, right on the line. But once the rally started, he was again too passive. He was just chipping the ball back. Turned it round, made the pass, but Dasko yeah, had a chance, yeah, but picked off. Ladies and gentlemen, please remind to be quiet during the point until the end of the point. No, don't point worry about it, Pascal, don't worry Thank about it. <laughs> Got to do his job, but... And if you're going to achieve what you really want in sport, I suppose in, in anything, without getting too philosophical, you've got to show you, your opponent that you want it. You have to dig deep. And you see it with Murray, don't you? And over the years, we've come to see it with him and the willpower and the heart to get the job done. It's uh, so much to be admired. You certainly saw it in those last two games. Murray was down break points Time. on his serve, did very well to hold on, and then really, for the first time in a while, got stuck into Vadasco's serve and got the crucial break. his time, Fernando Vadasco.
never a bad time for a love service game but that seemed like it was a very good time consolidated the break of serve I think from Murray's point of view he quite fancy another break of serve here to be then serving first in the fifth but we talk about the ebb and flow and over a best of five set match potentially three and a half hours or so momentum does move between one player and the other but really for the last hour or so just get the feeling Murray's been wrestling it away from Vadasco accepting the break points that he had in this set against the Murray serve which Murray fought off meeting in the Spanish competitors box there wondering what happened to the two sets of love lead by their man wonder what he's thinking Vadasco, Murray once again just a matter of feet away on the backdrop. Such power. Murray want to do the right thing, stepping into that return. But caught a bit late. Dasko digging deep. He's digging deep in the back to get all uh, organized for something or other. I don't know what can be in there. They take nutrition, grips, wristbands, and that's a, a, a vibration damper which he's changing in his racket there. It takes all the vibration away from the frame and gives you a more solid feel. Some don't like it, some do. But uh, no rain delays today. And continuous play here it's been wonderful well I was here at eight o'clock in the morning for the breakfast show and I he saw was, you you were great thank you he was we were up good 
uh, it was uh, rainy and the courts was covered and, and you know, we wondered if they're going to start with the roof closed but then obviously as the morning progressed it started to get more friendly so so good to have this option though the security that matches will be played regardless of the weather what a great decision to have the roof on but now the key is to hold serve to put that match into the fifth set Murray is giving himself the opportunity now he has to take it That was a huge challenge. Dozen aces in this match. Two hours and 39 minutes. Three set points to take us to a fifth set. One is all he needs. We're going the distance here on center court. Four a place in the semi final at the championships this year. A one-set shootout for Dasko and Murray. So, fifth set in the sunshine. Summer finally did arrive. And looking at the five set records of the uh, players here, well, I'll tell you about Time. that in a minute. No, I'll tell you about it right now. Uh, Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer are the last two five set opponents for Andy Murray. And he won both those matches. Slightly different story for Fernando Vadasco over five sets at Final set. the two previous Grand Slams this year, the Australian and the French Open. He lost in five sets to Anderson and Tip Savage. Talk about a match of two halves. It took, uh, took Vadasco an hour and 20 minutes to get up two sets to love. It took Andy an hour and 20 minutes to get back to two sets all.
These two players have gone five sets, just the one time. Budasco won that at the Australian Open in 2009. Long time ago, distant memory. Oh. Just going to say it's not that easy for da Fidasco serving southern end of the court, sun in his eyes. Came up with the ace. Medasco's first serve percentage is around 60. That's pretty good. Every point matters in that fifth set. Supposed to be continuous after the first game, but uh, players just taking their time here, and the umpire doing a good job. No warnings, just let them play. He's using common sense for once. We've been <laughs> criticizing umpires for years. This one's good. Slightly more distance run, chasing forehands most of the time in this match. 2,656 meters in short sprints. Andy Murray. That's what I want to see. Well, you, you were perfectly prepared to dive yourself, weren't you? But this was actually away from him. He had to dive after this. That wasn't just for the gallery and look good, that was necessary. The unforced errors are creeping up in the Murray game. Got to be careful.
each time Vadasco steps to the line. I feel that Murray is looking to take this serve on. Two sets down after an hour and 20. Came back and win sets three and four, six, one, six, four. So we're in a fifth, one game all. Yeah, and that's the worrying stat if that increases. In some of these rallies, Tim, I'd like Murray to be more aggressive, more, you know, taking the initiative, not just bouncing the ball back. That's what got Murray back into the match in the third and fourth sets when he was more aggressive, was looking to dictate and perhaps the pressure a little bit more back on Murray. No foothold in this game for Andy Murray. And Vadasco is now making it easy for him. Doesn't miss. Plays well under pressure now. Doesn't seem too rattled. Having waste, wasted the two sets to Lovely. Even though the Spaniard missed that point, he's been the aggressor. He's the one that takes initiative, that plays positive. So it's a 26-year-old from Dunblane in Scotland versus a 29-year-old from Madrid. Just locked in battle here. Second serve, points one, was always a battleground. We thought uh, we'd identified beforehand, are we right? Second serve, points one. In the fifth set so far, still early days, of course, but he hasn't lost one on second serve yet, Murray. In the first set and second, the two sets that he lost, those numbers were low. But is it about numbers now, Boris, or what? Very much. Uh, you know, I was waiting for that question. It's not about the second serve and the four. And this is about Tight. who's mentally tougher, who wants it more, who's willing to go where it hurts. You know, those players have played almost three hours. The body's aching. Uh, it, it, interesting that Sir Alex Ferguson is now sitting with one of his players, a former player, Nemanja Vidic. I wonder actually what Widic is doing at the Wimbledon Centre Court, not at Carrington practice, but I heard that David Moy started the training today. Maybe he's learning something about really competing, coming to Wimbledon. <laughs> Interesting that they would want to watch great sport together. Been in a few battles themselves.
fashionable start to the game. To understand some of the decision making by Murray the whole match. Does this set look to you more like one of the first two or sets three and four? I'm not going to give you the answer. But I think Verdasco is looking a little bit better now. Yeah, that's the pattern I like. That was played with, with purpose. Murray's got to find some inspiration again. It's a moment Murray can maybe find a point or two, maybe in a break. The Vadasco serve a two all in the fifth set, it doesn't hurt. with himself and the ball on the baseline earlier on in the rally from Vadasco his enormous topspin brought it back onto the line small margins in this game 15 off Murray has two challenges too many It's just having a lovely time, isn't he? Swinging freely despite being deep into the fifth set. Some really good slice backhands that set that opportunity up for Vadasco, and then he was able to step in and unload on the two-hander down the line.
Murray a little bit upset. He could have done more with that service game. This man is feeling good about his game right now. of Fernando Badasco and to illustrate the depth in men's tennis this is a man this year not even in the top 50 of the world rankings and only on four previous occasions at four previous tournaments Tim has he actually won back-to-back -back matches so this form is uh, a surprise it certainly is it's really come out of nowhere and, and uh, with so many early round losses confidence was so low and and when you look at his game, when you see him playing like this, that is, that is hard to believe. It's hard to understand how he can be 54 in the world. But uh, if he carries on playing like this, then he's got every chance of moving back up into the top 20 and perhaps top 10. Uh, the London skyline. We enjoy Melbourne at the beginning of the year in Australia for the first of the slams, and then Paris, the French Open. And later on in the summer, we'll enjoy New York Time. City. But London and this tournament is a big favourite with the players, and it's uh, it's a slick operation. And they enjoy coming here. Food is fantastic on site, and the entertainment is first class for all of us. <laughs> Exhausting to watch. For loved ones, no doubt, like Kim Sears, who's been with Andy for so long. And she's frequently the last voice you'll hear just encouraging her man. That's the best Mary has served in the fifth set. The very solid service games. He wasn't threatened once. That's the good news. It's an interesting looking couple. Certainly dressed for the occasion. Absolutely. Looking a little sapped there from Vadasco, or? Well, you mentioned it. He didn't have back to back wins all year long, and in fact, he's already in his fifth match last 10 days. Yeah. Oh, Martin McIntyre enjoys that serves him. I actually saw him last night a comedy of his. He's too funny. <laughs> If anybody want to want to laugh and want to have a good time, Michael McIntyre can recommend. You're not the first to notice. Just saying.
A couple of unforced errors. Nadasco feeling the tension. Half chance for Murray in the vital seventh. Well, as an opponent, you obviously called it lucky. Second serve. Ace. A second serve catching the line. Going Both up lines. the tee. Very low percentage. That's the game Vadasco has. Going to live and die by it. This is a pneumatic arm, isn't it? 15-30, second serve, ace. First serve and swat to get game point credit. That's what the fifth set is all about. What a brave and a bold. Fantastic game. Heartbreaking if you want Murray to win. You want to squeeze. So talk about showing what he's made of. Every time Murray just sort of looks at a break, looks like getting ahead. Tadasco has responded. You think it's going to run out, but no. Murray's won more points. Tadasco, more winners and more unforced errors. That's the way you would read it. You feel like Tadasco's rolling the dice, and at the moment his numbers are coming up. Is he going to be able to sustain it? He's getting closer to the finish line. This is where it's going to boil down to who holds their nerve, who can come up with the, the big shots at the right time. The prize, and it's a huge one, is a semi-final place at Wimbledon against Jerzy Janowicz from Poland, who won earlier on today. Novak Djokovic plays Juan Martin Del Potro in the other semi-final. So it's from these players that we will see the men's singles champion this year. Question is out to Murray now. Can he hold again with new balls? second serve on looking to be aggressive he, he wants to dictate play flashlights are bothering Murray for it. Still not a hair out of place, Vitasco. Off 
thirty. Murray wants the same ball again. They just won the point with. And these ball girls are doing a wonderful job. Vadasco has been ripping down the line, and if anything, he just blinked. Went back for the safety of cross court and missed it. Points in a row, Andy Murray. Oh. Oh. Oh, Dasco hits another big serve wide. to play against Murray standing in looking for the second serve opportunity and Badasco comes up with 130 mile an hour second serve up the tee 
gutsy play. So after nearly three and a quarter hours of this men's singles quarter-final, it is Vadasco is four clean hits away from a place in the semi-final. What's it all about at this point? Nerves, commitment, the training that you've done, and believing that you should win or not. Murray knows he's done all the work. Vadasco has been, I wouldn't say nowhere this year, but... Boy, this is the best he's played in a long time, and he doesn't seem to be running out of belief. No, he doesn't, and, and uh, certainly at this stage of the match, it's going to be the clarity of thought that it's going to be so important. Who can execute the basics, keep the high percentage of first serves, control the aggression? Love 30 down in his previous service game, Andy Murray. Came through it. Doesn't want to give Vadasco that sort of lead in this game Time. coming up. But that's the done it in the previous service game by Murray. Going for that second serve. This time without success. Well, matches like this stay in the memory and they stay in the body as well. Three hours, 20 minutes almost. Playing for a place in the semi-final. Whoever wins this will be fatigued ahead of Friday's matches. That's cool. 116 miles this time. And Murray doesn't like the call. Pascal Maria in the chair, just having a word with the line judge. Perhaps he said something. 
out. Somebody behind him in the crowd. He's supposed to say something. He's a line judge. And if you take that many risks on the second serve, you're eventually going to double fault. But considering nine double faults and five sets is not that much. Courageous again. Especially after a double fault. players struggling to get back under control physically here. exhibition of fitness that 20 stroke rally was at Deuce and it might have broken Vadasco's heart and I like the fact that he keeps on Sir Alex because there was a minute or two after the 90 minute it was called Sir Alex time when United would usually win time. in the 93rd or 94th minute very much like today
Got to love this theatre, centre court. And you've got to love the show that Andy Murray puts on. And Fernando Vadasco serving for a place in the semi final. Center court gets too excited. This man has to hold his nerve. Final for Andy Murray. This one, game the hard one. It's a challenge, so just hold on for a second. <laughs> I can't believe you got me. Is that what he's saying? And he has got him. Five sets from two sets down. What a performance of excellence. And listen to this reception for Andy Murray. Not since the Olympics have we heard this noise. And time and time again, Murray goes the distance and proves himself such a stubborn and high-level competitor. One-on-one, -on -one, there's no one tougher, apart from maybe Djokovic. Brilliant stuff from Fernando Vadasco, taking his salute. consecutive semi-final for Andy Murray as Fernando Vadasco is left to ponder how he let slip a two-set lead. Perhaps he could have started the third set with a little bit more intensity. But, but it's goodbye to centre court until Friday. He's in it again. And he does not want to feel like he felt having lost to Federer last year.
We are inching closer, perhaps, to a Djokovic-Murray final, the top two seeds after a tournament of huge upsets. There's a very big Polish man called Jerzy Janowicz waiting in the semi-final. It will not be an easy match to win. Physically, though, Murray should be left undamaged by this. I know it was three hours 30, but he is supremely fit, thanks to a team that he has put together and constructed over many years. The physical side is uh, well taken care of. I mean, he came into Queen's Club, and we were wondering, after he pulled out of the French Open, whether he'd be able to play Wimbledon at all or play at Queen's, and he's now on a 16-match winning streak on grass going all the way back through Queens this tournament and the Olympic gold last year so for the seventh time in his career and after almost three and a half hours Murray through in five sets he's talking to Gary Richardson many congratulations a great achievement getting through to the semi-final give us your assessment because he served so well didn't he served unbelievably well yeah, especially when he was behind in games he kept going for it made a lot um, when he was down. I thought uh, first set, um, he played some really good stuff at the end of the set when he needed to. Second set, my level dropped a bit when I went ahead. I started rushing a little bit, made a few mistakes, and then, uh, yeah, just managed to turn it around. But at two sets down by your own high standards, why wasn't it working for you today? Uh, it was a combination of things. One, um, he played extremely well, I thought, in the first set. And then second set, I made some, some poor choices, made some mistakes, um, and he served fantastically well, and he's a very, very good player. He's been at the top of the game before, and he's playing uh, like he was a few years ago. The thing is, Andy, you really held your nerve, didn't you? Uh, I did at the end of the match, yeah. I thought um, I, I took my time when I was behind. I didn't, didn't make any poor choices like I was maybe in the, the second set, and, and that was the, the difference. I started to play more solid, and really took my time when I had the, the chance. Was that the, perhaps the most emotional match on the way to a final in terms of nerves and the dangers and the pressures you were under towards the end there? Can you tell me that? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of matches uh, where I've been been behind and managed to, to turn them around and there's also been some where I've been ahead and, and, and it's gone the other way. So I don't know if it's the most emotional match I've played in, but, you know, towards the end, unbelievable atmosphere, great, uh, great to get through that one. And, Try and rest up for the, the semis. You've consistently said to us in interviews that you never take anyone lightly and you've pointed out what's happened to Nadal, what's happened to Federer. Is this match a warning to you in any way? No, it's not a warning because I know how good these players are and it's everyone else that keeps trying to say that they're not. And That guy, Ferdas, he's a very, very, very good player. I've lost him before in a slam. And he's incredibly dangerous, and he's serving even better than he did a few years ago. So not a warning. Um, you know, I can lose those matches. I don't play my best. Sir Alex Ferguson was in the Royal Box today watching you. Um, he's been known to go into the dressing room after matches and give um, his players a bit of hair dryer treatment. I wonder, will your, your coach, are you able to give us an insight? Uh, will Lendl uh, say some things to you, Andy, to sort of G you up? Or do you not need that? Do you know it all yourself? Uh, I don't know at all, um, far from it, but I, I don't see why I should get told off after that. I fought as hard as I could, um, tried incredibly hard, chased every single ball down from the first point to the last, and um, I came through an incredibly tough match. It could have gone the other way, and um, I, I found a way to get through, and that's all you need. Yeah, and, and, and it is a fantastic achievement to make yet another Wimbledon semi-final. Brilliant for you, such character. Yeah, it is very difficult to do that. Uh, Jersey Janowitz next. Your thoughts on that? Uh, he's he's one of the best young players on the tour. Huge serve, serves about 140 miles an hour. Um, incredibly uh, aggressive player. He's very tall, um, good athlete for his size, and um, be a very very tough match. He plays well on the grass. A brilliant performance. Very well done. Thanks. I thought it was